Hello and welcome everybody to this playthrough as Macedon of Imperator Rome with your host as always my dry bread. A uh, little bit of context for people seeing this in the future. This is being recorded a few days, uh, maybe about a week before the game is coming out. And so I'm going to be a little bit tutorializing this quite a bit just because it's such a new game for just about everyone. I've already had my hands on the game for about 10 hours or so, so I'm comfortable enough with the game that I generally know what's going on, although I don't know the depth of the strategies and the meta yet. And if you're coming into this game with any experience in other Paradox games and you're wondering what is this going to be like, which has been uh, a big thing debated online I've seen, this is mostly like Europe Universalis 4. If you want to compare it to any other Paradox game, it's a lot like that. Uh, so I don't want to waste too much time though, so let's just jump right in. So we're going to start a new game. Interestingly enough, unlike other Paradox games, it does the loading here. And weirdly enough, when you select your country, it just drops you right in. So here we can see the world here. We have some recommended nations and everything. And I know there's going to be a big Navy update pretty soon after launch, according to what Paradox have told me. One little thing you'll notice, by the way, when you rotate the map, uh, it's pivoting around what north is. I thought it looked really bad at first, but I got used to it. If you don't like that, you can turn that off in the options and it'll move like old Paradox games. Anyway, I wanted to play as a country that not everybody would play with, but still has a lot of um, opportunity for action in early game. Most people are probably going to play Rome. I play them in the tutorial. They're pretty fun. Uh, Carthage is over here, another recommended one where they're spread out quite far, but that's an interesting country for a uh, maritime power. Egypt is another very powerful one, but I think I want to go with Macedon because I'm, I'm on the Mediterranean. I can expand out easily. Uh, through triremes and galleys and whatnot. And I also have a lot of tribes to the north, as well as a lot of um, Greek city-states and whatnot to conquer in the south. So uh, this is not long after the death of uh, Alexander the Great. We can see it's um, 450 that is on the calendar of uh, how many years since Rome was built, which is 304 BCE, or BC, as it's sometimes called. Uh, we're going to go Iron Man mode, which enables achievements, although I believe I don't actually get achievements until the game is fully released. As far as I can tell, it seems like achievements don't work on this pre-release version. We can see we start off with an alliance with Thrace. Excuse my pronunciation and stuff. some stuff. I don't speak Latin or Greek, so I'm going to be trying my best. We also have uh, three subjects, a uh, tribal vassal, a fedatory? And uh, feudatory, fedatory, not sure. Uh, two of them. So we have two counties down here. You can see they highlight as I hover over these, which is a nice feature. They are tributaries, states of us. That's probably a better way to explain it. And we have a tribal vassal up here, which is a local tribe. They're not a monarchy like we are. We're going to be an aristocratic monarchy. And I'll show you the depths of what that means later. Uh, so the main difference between this playthrough and a lot you'll probably see online, a lot are probably going to be a republic like Rome or Carthage. Uh, we have a different system of government. This one's a little bit easier to wrap your head around, although republics are very cool in there on the right. Uh, let's not waste too much time, though. Iron Man, so we can't save scum and reload old saves. We're starting off as Cassander, and uh, we're mostly good at martial and finesse for our, basically this game's equivalent of monarch points, which... Finesse and Marshall are kind of my favorites anyway, so we're lucky. 49 cities. A city is like a county in what would be um, Crusader Kings 2 and stuff, and a population of about 600, which is pretty solid, made of mostly citizens, free men and slaves, a little bit of tribesmen. Let's start. So this is going to be Macedon. Let's play. There we go. And you can see I practiced a little bit. Aha! So we actually have a little opener thing that I'll read, uh, because we picked one of the main countries. Alexander the Great. In Babylon, 18 years ago, the Agred King Alexander died suddenly at the age of 32. In the five years preceding his death, his continuing military success had reshaped the world as known to the Greeks. His empire stretched uninterrupted from Egypt to the Indus, as in the Indus Valley in the Middle East. The shock of Alexander's early death 
and his lack of a chosen successor sent shockwaves through the hierarchy of Starops and hierarchy of Starops and generals who attended him, splintering his empire into elements ruled by these who protonates? Again, sorry, I apologize. Styled as, oh my god, styled as the Diadochi. Diadochi. For many years, they and their successors have been locked in a bitter struggle over the future of the Empire, drawing all nations within their sphere of influence into the conflict. The wars of the Diadochi will surely continue. Perhaps it is up to Macedon to decide how they end. The die is cast. Right off the bat, you can see this looks very Europa Universalis 4. Uh, you'll notice that the map by default is kind of a hybrid between the terrible terrain map that the games always start on that you switch away from immediately, and the regular provincial map kind of thing where the countries are color-coded. I actually think this looks kind of nice. You can easily see the terrain, you can see where the mountains are and whatnot, which is very useful. This is called the terrain map mode. There's also simplified terrain map mode, which color coats things based on what they are. You can see this is farmland, this is forest, this is hills, mountains, blah, blah, blah. That's good for if you're at war. But there is still the political map mode, as there's always been, which is it just very starkly colors everything by country. Um, I'd love if you guys could tell me in the comments what you prefer, but between the terrain map mode, where you can still see the heavy colors on the borders to see the divisions of the countries, um, or the political map mode, where it's very starkly colored, it's very easy to tell where one country starts and the other ends. So we're this deep blue. This is Macedon, our country. You can see our flag up here, which I thought looked very good in the thumbnail I was working on earlier today. And I know this is, this is a lot to look at right now, uh, but I'm really excited to get into all of this. So, the first most important thing, we have our Monarch Points. I don't know if they're called Monarch Points in this game, but in EU4 you'd call these your Monarch Points. We have our Military Power, our Civic Power, our Oratory Power, and our Religious Power. These are kind of like your Admin Points, your Diplo Points, and your Mill Points in Europe Universalis 4, but you have four of these. Mill Points, exactly what you think it is. It's it's mostly for going down your military tree. This is how you get specialized things based on what culture you are. And we are of, uh, we, are, we have the uh, modernized phalanx here because we are of Greek tradition. So right off the bat, as our starting ability, we can use the phalanx tactic, which I think is a pretty strong opening um, ability for your country. Greek uh, traditions tend to really favor that very beginning conquering because the phalanx tactic is so powerful with heavy infantry. We have civic power, which is largely technology. The way the tech tree works in this game is very fascinating. These guys, based on their abilities and what tech we have, will slowly increase our tech levels. We start off with three things, three inventions as they call them, which are boosts, techs basically, that we can purchase with a cost of 100 invention, uh, 100 invention cost, which is 100 civic power for each one of these. Civic power gives us trade routes and also gives us technology. Tech, obviously very important, but every time they go up a tech level, we get three new ones, but the old ones are pushed back. We would need to go through the new ones to get to the old ones, which means if you leave it too long, some of those old good ones might get lost. So this game is all about really prioritizing. You might even want to slow your tech a little bit if there's a lot of good ones you need to catch up on. It's interesting. Oratory power, that is your diplo points for befriending other countries or making claims on other countries, as well as modifying your government and upgrading pops in your country, population, which is a little bit of a Victoria 2 mechanic, but I don't want to get too far into that just because I am not super familiar with Victoria 2. That's kind of my blind spot when it comes to Paradox Interactive games. And lastly, religious power. This is mostly for, uh, one thing you can do is sacrifice to the gods, which gives you stability. It, it works very, very much the same way as in Europe Universe Else 4. You can go between negative three and positive three stability. The higher above zero you are, the more tax you have, legitimacy, research, it's just tons and tons of bonuses, whereas you get tons and tons of debuffs if you're below zero, and this gets changed a lot by events. Or you can be spending your religious power on converting population for stability and unity, 
And also on omens, which is for a set number of years, you get some kind of bonus. This is to guide your whole country in a direction. I'm a really big fan of research points, national tax and manpower because we've got manpower like it's Europe Universalis Four. So you've really got to make sure you always have a deep reserve of manpower or deep enough pockets to hire mercenaries. So what are opening moves here now that we're 10 minutes in? Welcome to a Paradox Interactive game. What do we want to do? The big question for me immediately is we have 200 oratory power. We could immediately drop 200 on fabricating a claim on a country. It usually costs about 200. This actually costs us a little bit less. I'm not sure why. Usually it's 200. Um, or we could immediately start upgrading our government. So we are a... I'm blind. I know it says on the screen. So, oh, aristocratic monarchy right there. We're an aristocratic monarchy. So every different government has different bonuses right here. Ours are, uh, right, we don't get these. These bonuses are currently inactive because there's a big X here. We don't have our uh, matching bonus yet. We get all these things if we have our, our matching ideas. So you can see we get two of every single um, monarch point per turn, basically, if you want to call it turns. Plus, we lose tyranny over time, and citizens are happier. Citizens are the ones who give you tech and commerce, by the way, which is like trade goods money. So citizens, you really want to keep happy. They're, they're your highest rank in society in terms of regular people. What this is, is there's all kinds of ideas we can pick from, and as we progress through the tech tree, we can get more of these. Each one we take or change costs us 50 oratory power. So to get our matching bonus, we need to have one military and two oratory because that's what matches an aristocratic monarchy. Other countries might have different combos. So we could pick some civic ones or all religious ones or something, but we would miss out on all these bonuses. And let me tell you, the, uh, the two of all the monarch points, that's an incredibly strong bonus that I do not want to miss out on. The monthly tyranny, not the strongest in the world. It depends on how you want to play. And the happiness is nice, but not the end of the world. The monarch points are what I want this for. So we could drop a grand total of 150 oratory power to grab all these right now, but it will really delay our first war. So in the long run, taking our ideas right now is probably a good idea. Right off the bat for a military one, I'm digging the idea of uh, martial ethos, 10 morale to armies. That really gives us our edge in early war, especially against countries who don't have that. For a two oratory, uh, we could lose monthly corruption, which would allow us to take some corruption on. We wouldn't be as afraid about getting corruption, knowing we'd slowly get rid of it a little bit better. We can get loyalty for our generals and admirals. I really like the idea of that because a rogue general or admiral might just start wandering around with their own army and messing with you. Uh, and also improve maximum opinion. This is, you know how all the Paradox games, you can improve opinion with people? This increases what the maximum amount of opinion you can get out of that action is. I consider that to be a fairly strong bonus, but in this instance where we want to go hardcore with war early and we're already much po more powerful than a lot of nearby people, I think I might actually not go for that one. Uh, we'll have to see. We can also see all of our, all, our um, provinces here. You can see them broken down on the right as I hover over these. We can see that us, uh, we are con we're the governor for a lot of this. That little coin portrait by there, uh, by the way there, that you'll see often on people's faces, that means it's your current ruler. So you can see at a glance that that is in fact uh, Cassander, which is us. Uh, Cassander is the brother of Alexander the Great or possibly one of his sons. I, I actually don't remember 100%. Um, but it, again, Alexander the Great just died very recently at this point in history. So, uh, I, I think this is a good point to, uh, good point to point out, by the way. If you're watching this, uh, on the day it came out, I'm actually planning on streaming this later today, because this is the day that the embargo is up. I want to do the entire rest of this series streamed with you guys, because I think that'd be really fun. Maybe I'll do a couple episodes like this, and the rest I'll be streaming so I can take questions from you guys live and get feedback from you, and it can be a big collaborative thing. And of course, all those streams will be uploaded in this playlist in the description here on YouTube, so the YouTube audience doesn't miss anything. So just know that if you're watching this on YouTube on the day of, check out the description, follow me on Twitch, and you can uh, watch live and participate.
Anyway. So the big decision of do we want to use that initial oratory power for making a claim or not? Let's take a look at our situation here. So if we go to a uh, diplomacy map mode, so uh, we're green and you can see that uh, our vassals, I guess you'd call them our vassals, are uh, in different kinds of cyan and teal kind of colors. Um, if I were to click on another country, would it? Yes, it does. Ch okay. I'm trying to look at, uh, so these two are an alliance, aren't they? Yes, they are. So I'm familiarizing myself with colors here. If I left click on just one of them, you can see they're green because they're the selected one and their allies are blue. So these guys are allies. So if I click on myself, I can tell that this one's an al I'm allied with these guys. In fact, it says thrice is allied with Macedon uh, on the tooltip near my cursor there. Okay. Whereas vassals are uh, this kind of cyan teal. I guess you call that teal. Uh, so they pay us tribute. In fact, if you look at our money, uh, good, it didn't do the glitch. Sometimes when you look at the money breakdown and you've just loaded the file, there's this weird glitch where it shows ridiculously high numbers and they're not correct and they fix themselves in a game month. Uh, so we can see right now that we are losing money right now, but <clears throat> we'll fix that fast because uh, Macedon is actually quite rich in resources and we're probably going to get bombarded with requests for trade routes very early and that'll make us our, our early cash to fund our army. We have, uh, we're at our maximum manpower, everyone starts at max, and our max is actually quite high right now. We're actually much stronger than Rome right now, although Rome's probably going to grow faster than us. Uh, Rome's obviously very powerful, and is going to be our first big thing that I'm going to worry about. Um, if we just look, is there any, like, easy pickings targets right now? Um, these two are allied with each other. And they also have subjects here. Okay, so he's got eight cohorts. Cohorts is like your army count, basically. He's got eight, six, twelve. That's not bad. If I go to war with that whole faction, I can take them. And look at the land I'd take, too. If I were to completely occupy all their lands, I could take all of every colored province right now. I would take. We would nearly double the size of our country, and we'd have access to the, um, oh, what is this called nowadays? Uh, the Adriatic Sea. This is the, this is what that's called now. Uh, which was the Mare Adriacum? A A Atticum? The Adriatic Sea. It would give us access to the Adriatic Sea. Um, our ships would still have to go around the whole, like, you know, all the, the Greek waters here to get between the two sides, but... That'd give us a good landing point if we want to start going into southern Italy early. Maybe try and deny Rome getting southern Italy so early to try and stifle their growth. I might be thinking too many steps ahead right now. So, I dig the idea of going after these guys first. So, they are going to have 6 uh, plus 12, that's 18, uh, plus another 8. So, they are going to have about 26... Um, 26 cohorts grand total, 26 army. Uh, grand total, their manpower ab uh, across all the countries totaled is about the same as my manpower. Okay, so they have about the same reserve as me. I have 21 total, so I'm gonna want a few more. However, I've got big allies. I mean, between my allies and my vassals, I massively outgun these guys. Okay, we're doing this immediately immediate i'm fabricating claim he only has one province this whole country's one province with a population of 45. we now have a claim on the province of Illyria, something like that okay and we we aren't allowed to declare war for about a month um as our diplomat comes back also you're not allowed to declare war in this game in general until november 1st the first month of the game is war-free no matter what. Uh, probably just so you don't totally cheese your neighbor in multiplayer. Because, uh, of course, this game is also multiplayer. Okay. So we've done that. Our biggest priority with oratory power after this, though, is we got to fix the government stuff right away. Our first thing, idea we're going to pick is definitely martial ethos to get that moral or morale for our army, uh, which should pop during this war, which will be nice. If we hit tab, we can get our outliner here, so we can see 
We have our first army here. Let's appoint a commander. The guy with the highest martial skill here is ourselves, Cassander. <clears throat> the nice thing about appointing yourself, you never need to worry about loyalty because you, you can't be disloyal to yourself. Now keep in mind, this isn't quite CK2. You're not playing as the guy, you're playing as the country. So if this guy dies, we play as the new leader. Uh, you always play as whoever the leader of your country is. Anyway. Uh, we will pick ourselves for this. I'm fine with that. Uh, and you can see we have 7,000 uh, archers, or 7 cohorts worth of archers, 7,000 heavy infantry, 7,000 light cavalry. So this is the first thing we want to be concerned with, is what is our action? By default, it's shock. So these are different tactics we can tell our guy to use. We can see the general effectiveness, 33% right there, because it would really power up the heavy infantry, heavy cavalry, and war elephants. But that's only a third of our army is heavy infantry. We don't have heavy cav, we don't have heavy, we don't have elephants. We can also see that we'd have a bonus against uh, envelopment and Padma Voiha? I, that sounds Indian to me. We'd be bad against phalanx and bottlenecks to some degree. But you can, I see one advantage over everything else here. Phalanx. This is our big advantage of being Greek right now. Is this is really good for light cav for heavy infantry, light infantry, and war elephants, making a strong phalanx, that'd be awesome, power up a lot of our troops, and it's good against shock, which is a very common early game um, tactic. So this would hard counter them. Whereas it's bad against envelop and triplex axes? Um, triplex axes, I believe, is one that you have to have through your culture. So uh, envelop everyone can do, and envelop, powers up camels, chariots. Uh, okay, it only powers up different kinds of people who are mounted. So, mm, I'm not that worried. I will go phalanx then as my tactic there. I'm pretty happy with that. I'm also gonna recruit a little bit to my army because I know that some money is gonna roll in soon, so I'm not too concerned. So we're going to use this action to tell our people, hey, uh, send the troops directly to this army. In fact, before we do that, Let's split this army in half. I'm happy with that. So we're gonna send him here. We can see the supply limit is 13. Our weight is 12, so we won't get attrition there. He'll start marching. This empty army, we need another general for them. Our next best by a, a mar large margin is this guy, Alexander. He looks like a family member, actually. He's a pretender to the throne. Uh, we have the same surname. Okay, he's 16 years old. Not the most talented guy in the world. Um, but he's quite loyal to us and popular, so I've got no real qualms about that. He'll be a fine general. And he will also go phalanx. Uh, both people going phalanx I'm happy with. He's going to march down here. Um, so our big concerns in this war, we don't know where their capitals are. And are these both one county? Yes. So if we occupy their capitals of both of these places, we'll crush them fast. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna say, recruit to army, and you're gonna get uh, a heavy infantry and a light cav. Both of them are going to just get those two. Heavy infantry, light cav. And whenever they're done training over here, they'll automatically walk to the army and combine with them. Okay, I'm, I'm digging this so far, I'm digging this. Uh, we might have a little bit of attrition, but we'll be okay. So we can have one more trade route in our capital. What's our capital already getting? You can see this pillar with the, uh, what do you call them? The laurels around it? The golden laurels? You can just barely see that, probably. Um, that means it's the capital of the whole country, whereas a regular pillar is the capital of the county or the province. Uh, so what do we have in terms of resources here? What are we importing? We are importing grain from Egypt, from Western Delta. That's the Egyptian flag. I know it's minuscule. I even made the UI bigger for you guys in the options. Um, surplus grain, we have a surplus of two grain, which is awesome. Grain gives you the highest population growth, which I think is very important, especially in early game. So you can see all cities have the, in uh, the province of Macedon, which is Macedonia, province Macedonia in Macedonia, uh, get local population growth. Plus having additional surplus gives more population growth. And the fact that it's also in the capital 
gives the entire country 10% more national manpower, which is incredibly huge for staying strong. We also have fish and we have livestock. That's all the food resources. So our growth in, in the capital province is very healthy, which I'm happy with. We have wood so we can make triremes. We have olives to keep the slaves happy. I'm not sure why. Uh, horses so we can train heavy and light calves. That's important to me. Lots of wine makes the free men happy. And because it's the capital, are we maintenance down a little bit? That's important. Glass commerce increase by a lot and a little bit of religious tech investment up. So I'm actually really happy with the resources in the capital. These are resources that I think are fantastic, not a single bad resource. We can do one more trade route. This will cost us 25 uh, civic power, which I'm okay with. I don't think I immediately need to get two inventions. We can see check marks next to things. These means that we could get tra uh, trade routes easily. So strategic resources, we could do surplus wood that would give us local tax up, but 3% local tax just in the capital county isn't actually worth much right now. Surplus and capital would make our triremes better though. Actually, you know what? Let's give the trireme here. Um, our fleet. We'll give them... None of these guys are any good, so we'll just give them this guy because he's loyal at least. Is this uh, tactically inflexible? I will not pick him then. We'll pick him, and we will preemptively tell our triremes to circle around and get ready to block in ports. That's worth a lot of war score. Okay, and I don't, I don't feel the need to do like a naval landing or anything fancy like that. Um... So what do we want to import in the capital here? We could do surplus livestock or fish to get even more uh, local growth, but as you can see, the surplus isn't worth as much as it is for grain. We could get Freeman happiness for that, or Freeman promotion costs down for that because it's capital. Um, I don't think I need either of those particularly right now. There's a lot of military stuff we could do here. Wild game, yeah. A uh, hemp. Supply limit up for vegetables is very temp tempting. Supply limit is a very common issue. Uh, every single county has a supply limit, mostly based on how uh, urbanized the place is. Uh, you want The bigger the population and the more urbanized the place is, the more developed the place is, the higher the supply limit. Supply limit is how demanding of an army can stand there before there starts being manpower attrition. So basically people starving. I think I'm going to go with vegetables because we're going to be going into a little bit less developed land and I'd like to minimize attrition. So this will increase supply limit by 10%. And if we can get a surplus here, that'd be even more, but it's just for the province, so. Um, but would this be supply limit for everything or supply just for, I think it's for everything. So we'll take it. We can get it from Egypt here, yeah. I'm happy with this. This will earn us... Uh, a quarter a gold a month. What is the treasury taxes? I guess it just, it's gold. Um, you will earn a little bit of money just for engaging in the trade. Uh, it'll cost us an upfront of 25 civic power to start the trader, which isn't bad. Okay, there we go. Okay, and we can get an invention. So we can only take one invention right now. I like to start herbalism, gets tech speed up 5%, which means the tech speed of everything will go up by 5% forever. So that pays off early. Uh, our research points are okay. 40 is okay early on. We do have a lot of citizens. Uh, starting experience is a little tempting. Military tech investment 5% is nice, but that's just for one thing, whereas herbalism is for everything. Uh, army morale recovery 2%, not worth it this early. Diplomatic reputation is good in the long run. National tax? We've got a lot of time to get that. I don't need it immediately. I'll get it in a bit. Commerce I want to get as well. I think I am going to start with herbalism. There we go. Knowledge of plants and herbs which surround us. We can use uh, beyond that. Which many aspects, many would suspect from birth control to medicine we cannot underestimate botany. Sorry, that is a very hard color to read for me. Okay. And we can call down our first omen. I'm a big fan of national tax as our first omen here because we're getting most of our money through tax. Increasing that by basically 23% is going to be really nice right now for making sure we don't go into debt early. There we go. So that is what we'll have for five years at the current pace. Uh, we can always get bonuses 
uh, later that make omens last longer. But five years, I'm happy with that for now. But uh, that's the first half an hour. We haven't even unpaused the game yet, but isn't it pretty normal? First episode of a Paradox game, you don't unpause the game. The next episode, I think it's pretty safe to say that we're going to conquer uh, three countries. Um, now, what are we considered? We are regional power. We're going to conquer a local power, a local power, and a local power. Okay. We're likely going to conquer three local powers next episode. Thank you so much for joining me. Again, there's a playlist in the description if you'd like to watch more. I'll have three episodes up today on launch day, and I will also be streaming, and all of that will also go into the playlist. All of that uh, you can find the the streams on Twitch TV, which is linked in the description. Thank you again so much for watching. Until next time, have a nice day.